Yo, 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 what's going on, y'all? It's Cone back here again today with another video. And today, I'm going to talk for a bit about the Los Angeles Clippers. I originally was going to make this a full After the Buzzer recap video talking about every game that happened last night. But as I was typing up my notes for the video, which I typically do prior to recording, I realized... I have way too much to say about this LA team. I have to go ahead and give them their full dedicated video because right now things really don't look good for them. Heading into their matchup against the Warriors last night, the Clippers were on a three game losing streak and hadn't won since the all-star break. Despite making some big trade deadline acquisitions, adding Russell Westbrook in the buyout market, they just couldn't seem to get a win. They played some close games and some good teams in those matchups, but these are ones that they have to win down the stretch of the season as they're competing for seeding while trying to establish themselves as a championship contender. But this felt like a chance to right the ship because the Warriors, without Steph Curry, without Andrew Wiggins, the Clippers, meanwhile, they were missing Zubats and Marcus Morris, but otherwise were basically completely healthy. This was their chance to actually get a win. And initially, it felt like it was going to go that way. They're up 11 points at halftime, and despite the Warriors getting a lot of decent looks, they just weren't hitting them. They could not seem to get their offense going, so it felt like the Clippers had a decent chance to go ahead and steal this one. Chuck was even saying at the halftime show that he was taking the Clippers to go to the Western Conference finals. It felt like everything was good in LA and all the doom and gloom that has built up over the past few games seemed to be dissipating. Then the third quarter happened. Jordan Poole annihilated them. He scored 22 points in the third quarter, single-handedly outscoring the entire Clippers roster, which is something that even stretched a bit into the fourth quarter. Halfway through, the Clippers finally eclipsed his total in the second half, but they got annihilated. They ended up losing by 24 points after leading by 11 at halftime. They got outscored 35 to 70 in the second half. It was Jordan Poole, it was Klay Thompson, Jonathan Kuminga was playing some amazing defense, Draymond Green, everybody was clicking for this Warriors team, and the Clippers had absolutely no answer. Their defense fell apart, their offense was terrible, they kept settling for these threes, not attacking inside, even though they were abysmal from the arc in this game. It felt like they had no game plan, they made no adjustments, and now they fall to 0-4 since the All-Star break, and with this loss, they're the seventh seed, and sure, in this current Western Conference, one win can get you from the seventh seed to like the five seed, so it's not that big of a deal seeding-wise, but overall, this game is part of a consistent theme that we've seen from the recent recently, where the Clippers just don't look like championship contenders or even a team that will win a first round series. The West is really deep. There are a lot of great squads, and I don't honestly feel very confident in saying that the Clippers can come out of the first round with the way that they're playing right now. So what is going wrong for them? And there's a number of things, but I will say one thing that is absolutely going right is Kawhi Leonard. He's been incredible as of late last night. He didn't have a crazy game. He had 21 points and seven boards on 75% shooting, which is good. But over these four games that they've lost, he's averaging 30.3 points per game while shooting 60% from the field, about 60% from three. He's been amazing. And this is something that's continued over over their past like 25 games, he's averaging around 30 points on ridiculous efficiency. I think it's 50, 40, 90 even. He's been unstoppable. There's nothing you can do. And it feels like we're starting to see the Kawhi Leonard of old, the one that was pre-ACL injury at the beginning of the season. He was really slow to get back to his usual self. But having this version of Kawhi Leonard, regardless of all the other struggles, is a huge bright spot for the Clippers. And it's a great sign going forward. Unfortunately, there really aren't many other bright spots on this roster at the moment. Also give a shout out to Mason Plumley, who is probably the only other good player in this game for Los Angeles. He had 12 points and 20 boards. He's been solid as a backup big, and I think with Zubats healthy, he's a really serviceable center off the bench. But now let's talk about the not so good. And the first guy I wanna go over is Paul George because he is supposed to be the secondary star to Kawhi Leonard. Kawhi is obviously the superstar, the go-to guy, but PG is supposed to be able to take over some nights. He's supposed to be able to support him and give him the extra offense that he needs to get the Clippers over the hump. Was not the case tonight where he shot 3 for 15 for 11 points and probably the most important game of the Clippers season so far. Now I do want to give some credit to Jonathan Kuminga who just played great defense, but even still PG has to be better than this in these big moments. Additionally on defense, he was not good. He was falling asleep, missing rotations. Just felt like he wasn't engaged defensively, which I feel like has kind of become a theme with him. Now, obviously with old age, you're gonna regress defensively, but even so, he's gone from like a defensive player of the year, all defensive caliber guy, to now being like a good defender, I would say some nights, or sometimes even just like a okay defender, which shouldn't be the case. If you're supposed to be this high level two-way guy next to Kawhi, you've gotta be better than that on both sides. You have to be more consistent, which has been an issue with him. There are some nights where he's amazing, while some nights you're wondering, what happened to Paul George? 
March. A big issue of his recently, not so much in this game, has been the turnovers. He's thrown so many lazy turnovers, especially in that Kings game I can look back to where the Kings made that massive like 10 point comeback towards the end of the game. Paul George threw a number of careless turnovers. He just didn't seem to really take care of the ball, which he's not done very well at all recently. I don't know what's going on. It just feels like PG is maybe regressing a little bit, which is understandable with the injuries that he's had, the age, but it bodes terribly for the Clippers. Obviously, you can have a superstar in Kawhi, and it's going to take you some places, but unless you have a great secondary star, you're not going to win a championship. You're not going to make a deep run in a great Western Conference. I'm not convinced at this point that Paul George can be the secondary guy on a championship caliber team. I just don't know if he's that type of player anymore. Maybe he can prove me wrong, but right now I just don't feel great about it. Then there's Russell Westbrook, who right now is getting a lot of hate. People saying that this 0-4 stretch is all his fault. This game tonight, it's his fault that the Clippers lost, which if you've watched those games, that's not at all the case, but he was one of the worst Clippers tonight. I'm not going to deny that even as a big Russ fan. He shot 3 for 12. He was 0-5 from 3. He had 4 turnovers, just 8 points. It was bad. Uh, the Warriors were leaving him wide open for three. Draymond was playing like the Ben Simmons defense, maybe even on steroids. He was literally standing in the paint while Russ was on the three-point line, daring him to shoot. And there were a lot of times where Russ just didn't shoot. He was kind of afraid. It felt like he lost confidence. Even if you're not going to hit them all the time, if they're going to leave you that wide open, you have to be willing to take those shots if you're Russ. You can't lose that confidence because otherwise teams are just going to keep doing it. It allows them to clog up the paint, prevent any attempts at getting downhill, causes you to settle for a bunch of threes, which is an issue that the Clippers already have. So when you expound on that, it just gets worse and worse. He's had some good games, like his first three games, I felt like he was pretty good, but this one definitely shows some of the flaws with him being in that starting lineup, which is another issue that I do have with the Russell Westbrook acquisition. This one really isn't his fault in particular, it's more so a fault with the continuity of the team. Before the trade deadline and before the All-Star break, the Clippers were starting Terrence Mann a lot at the point guard spot. Reggie Jackson and John Wall weren't doing a great job, both of them effectively got benched, but Terrence Mann, Kawhi Leonard, and Paul George together in the starting lineup were 10 and 2. Their net rating was phenomenal. The Clippers seemed to be building momentum, finding a rhythm, and maybe working towards becoming a championship contender type team. But now with the Clippers acquiring Russ and starting him, they completely threw all of that momentum out the door. I want to see Russ succeed, and I do think he can be successful with this Clippers team. But I don't quite understand why they saw a formula that was working so well and immediately decided to get rid of it, to just completely throw it out the window, put Terrence Mann back on the bench. It just doesn't add up to me. And now you're adding a new starting point guard who has never played in this system before into your lineup with 20 games to go in the regular season. It's going to take time for him to get accustomed to the rest of the roster, the rest of the roster to get accustomed to him, each other's play styles. You're going to lose a lot of games in the process and you might not even figure it out by the end of 20 games. That's not a very long point of the season. This just continues to add to the continuity issues that the Clippers have had all year. Guys injured in and out of the lineup, load management in and out of the lineup, now adding Russell Westbrook, multiple guys at the deadline too, Eric Gordon, Mason Plumlee, Bones Highland, all expected to play decent to really substantial roles on this team as they try to compete for a championship. They've got 20 games to get acclimated to the rest of this roster and the rest of the roster that was maybe even somewhat starting to figure out their roles in that 10 and 2 stretch. Now after one once again, readjust. They have to figure out, okay, what's my role when this guy's on the court? How do I play alongside this guy? They have to develop chemistry with four new guys. That is a substantial part of the team's rotation. It's hard to do, and it's been a problem all season with Kawhi PG and the rest of the guys being in and out of the lineup. This just makes it so much worse. Tyron Lue said, I'm going to figure out the rotation soon, which is fine. You should do that. But there's 17 games left of your season. You take a couple more games to figure it out. Now you have 15 games for your entire rotation to figure out how to play alongside each other, how to best perform before heading into an absolutely loaded Western Conference playoff picture if they even make it. Like I said, they're in the plane at the moment and the way that they're going, they could very easily fall to the bottom of it. Then you've got to win a couple of games. Last year, they lost in the play in which they didn't have Paul George or Kawhi Leonard in that second game. So they probably have a better chance of winning this year. I just think this team's even better than last year's overall. But it's not guaranteed. There are going to be some really good teams, most likely, in that play-in tournament. You lose one or two games, or even if you win those, you're going up against the Grizzlies, the Nuggets in the first round. Those teams are going to beat you. I don't think the Clippers can beat many teams in the West at the moment in a first-round matchup. I'm taking the Nuggets over them. I'm taking the Grizzlies. I'm taking the Phoenix Suns. I'm taking the Kings at this point, too. That's at least four teams. The Golden State Warriors, and only four teams advance to the second round. 
So I don't even know if they're going to make it out of the first round. They're probably going to have a tough matchup because they are going to continue to test out rotations, learn to play alongside each other, lose more games. It's just an absolute disaster. They don't have any semblance of continuity. One of their stars is struggling. Both of them are injury prone. They're not particularly good on either side of the ball. They're the 12th defense and the 19th offense. They have one of the worst net ratings in the league. I think it's 23rd at this point. They're overall just inconsistent. None of this is a recipe to win a championship. The only reason that many people still consider them contenders is because of what they look like on paper. On paper, they're one of the best rosters in the league, but that doesn't matter if you can't execute. I do think part of this is also coach it. Tyron Lue was one of the best coaches in the league last season. I think he's done a great job overall with this Clippers team in his tenure. But for some reason this year, it feels like it's just not working. His rotations don't make sense. The adjustments just don't feel like they're happening. Tonight, he watched a 35 to eight run and did basically nothing. He just did not adjust. He kind of just let it happen. I don't know what's quite going on. Maybe part of it is because he's had to deal with so many guys in and out of the lineup, so he can't really establish a rotation, establish a scheme, because he hardly knows who's going to play every single night, which brings me to the fact that Kawhi Leonard is sitting out tomorrow on the second half of a back-to-back -back against the Sacramento Kings, who are probably going to beat them, pushing them to 500 on the season. It's just... Everything's bad. Make matters even worse, if they do end up having a short playoff run, like I said, a first or a second round exit, where do they go from here? They don't really have much room to improve. They owe all their picks to Oklahoma City. They've got some young talent in like Terrence Mann and Bones Highland, but I don't think either of them are going to become the stars that save this squad. Paul George and Kawhi are both getting older and like I said, dealing with injuries a lot more often than they used to. A lot of the role players too are getting older. Eric Gordon, who they just traded for, Mason Plumley, Marcus Morris, amongst many other guys. This is an aging roster that right now isn't working. You don't have picks to improve it. Tyron Lewis and done a great job as head coach. It feels like this is kind of a make or break season for them. And I don't see many ways for it to go the make route. Theoretically, if things do go south, these playoffs, they could just reset in the off season, go into a rebuild, trade Kawhi, trade Paul George and some other pieces but they don't own any of their picks. Once again, they are all given to Oklahoma City to bring in Paul George and Kawhi Leonard in the first place. So you're just going to be tanking to give OKC great picks. But if you try and compete and this thing just isn't working, you continue to cycle in new role player after new role player, it feels like they're really not going to get anywhere. Regardless, it feels like the end of this Clippers era isn't too far off. After trading everything to OKC to bring in Paul George to lure Kawhi away from Toronto, they seem like they were going to be one of the top contenders. They were the championship favorites going into that first season together. But after multiple disappointing years, both due to injuries and their own failures, it feels like this might be it. Now, before we wrap the video up, I do want to note, yes, I do think there is a slim chance the Clippers somehow figure this thing out. Kawhi is playing like a superstar. Maybe PG regains his rhythm. Their other role players figure out their roles and regain their consistency. And maybe they make something happen. I just don't think it's very likely whatsoever. I think that this is building up towards an eventual collapse of this Clippers team as we know it. Might be kind of doom and gloom. It may be a bit pessimistic, but overall, things just don't feel very good in Los Angeles at the moment. With all that being said, I appreciate y'all watching. Make sure you leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of these videos. Go ahead and comment down below. Do you think the Clippers are still championship contenders? Where do you see them going in the playoffs? What teams do you think they can beat in a first round series? And if you think that they're in trouble like I do, what moves should they make in the off season? Should they blow it up? Should they continue to try and build around these two stars? Maybe trade Paul George for another star to try alongside Kawhi Leonard? Let me know all of your ideas in the comment section below. I will be there as always. But for right now, I appreciate y'all watching. I will see y'all later. Real one safe back.